brighten up those dark mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter. Mornings at the Cabin. Morning, everybody. Ollie in for Wheeler. Wheeler is ill this morning. We wish you very well. Get well soon, Mr. Wheeler. Personally think he was just trying to avoid the jujitsu challenge last night. Ah, we'll come back to that. Morning, then. Well, if even the world's best equipped cities to host an Olympics no longer want anything to do with it, well, where's it going to go? Calgary is as close to a flat pack Olympic city as you're ever going to get. Some minor assembly required. Two hours, instruction manual, you could have an Olympic Games. With that in mind, if you cannot convince Calgary it's worth doing, with so much of the stuff already there in a country which hugs winter sports to death, we can forget it, can't we? That's it. Done. We've had the last Winter Olympics. It's never coming back. This eight years after the same country hosted one of the most successful Olympic Games by most measures in modern history. I I do not know what else Calgary's bid could have had in its favor. It was a stacked deck and the bid is still going to die. If you haven't heard, Calgary's residents voted in a plebiscite yesterday. 56% no, no Olympics here. We don't want the 2026 Olympics. Canada not being able to get a Winter Olympics bid off the ground in a city with all those venues suggests to me the Olympic Games is cooked. It's toast. Which is a little sad. We're going to come back to that. This is Mornings at the Cabin. Ah, Alberta, who cares about Alberta? We'll hold the Olympics in Yellowknife. We'll put some events in Hay River and Fort Smith, don't worry. We'll throw a few up to Inuvik. Put some in Fort Simpson. Cross-country skiing in Norman Wells. Morning, everybody. Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast. Mornings at the Cabin. This is Ollie with you. And Lecter has wandered into the building fresh from late night game of hockey. Did you win? Oh, no. (laughs) Excellent. No, we got destroyed. You know what else got destroyed? Go on. Calgary's 2026 Olympic bid. Yeah! No. No? No. Oh. Uh, Some people seem pretty happy about that. Yeah, Calgary residents voted 56% against hosting the 2026 Winter Olympics last night. And, yeah, I, I will declare an interest off the bat. I may have been ever so slightly involved with the Olympics in the past. It was kind of my previous job. Yes. I still occasionally get to go, so... Let let the following four minutes stand as the record of a bitter person being bitter. This is idiotic, Lecter. This is moronic. This is the single worst decision since he tried to think of a worse decision. I can't, since, since they rejected the monorail in Springfield. Since they allowed Rio de Janeiro to host. Yeah, well, that was a <laughs> unfortunate for Rio. But anyway, Calgary... <laughs> Calgary is completely different to Rio in in any sense. Right, it had all the stuff. Right, mm. it had we had the vast majority of the stuff, more so okay. than ninety nine point nine percent of cities. It's got pretty much all the stuff you need with a lick of paint and some fixing. Okay, right. Uh, you will not find a better prepared city. It's hmm. as simple as that. If if you cannot host the Winter Olympics in Calgary anymore, they don't want it. Then it's probably dead. Not and, Vancouver and Beijing. Well, Vancouver's maybe as prepared as Calgary. Is, right. right, it's got the same level of facilities. The Winter Olympics I mean, I are not they just had it recently. So yeah, the Winter Olympics are not that different from when Calgary last hosted. Right. Yeah. They, there's a few new sports, but they don't require like new ski jumps the way that you would have to build a thing for something like that. Right. So so Calgary's got the vast bunch of stuff. If you can't get a games off the ground in Calgary, I wonder where you're going to do it. Now the naysayers, the naysayers, <laughs> will tell you it's about cost. So here yeah. goes on costs. Right. right. Strap yourself in. Mm-hmm. So the deal would have been that Calgary, through taxes, would have had to come up with three hundred and ninety million dollars. Okay, right. sounds like a large sum of money, I'm sure. Yes, I can hear people quaking in their boots. And that, and that's that's modest compared to recent Olympics. Um, in terms of taxpayer input, it's it's relatively oh, taxpayer similar. Taxpayer input, right? So the Sorry. games would have cost a bunch more than that, but like, right. But the but, taxpayers yeah. themselves would have been on the hook for three hundred and ninety million. Right. The investment back into Calgary would have been four point four billion. Mm. And that would have been 1.2 billion guaranteed from the International Olympic Committee, 1.5 billion from the federal government, 700 million from the province, more from Olympic sponsorships and ticket sales. The jobs created would have brought roughly a billion into Calgary through the through the building phase. Y- you could even, if you were being very generous, say, "Look, you're going to get another billion dollars in free media coverage of Calgary. You're going to get years of promotion of Calgary as a place mm. out of it hosting the Olympics." Now. So you're looking at, basically, you've said no to four and a half billion dollars because you collectively didn't feel like spending 390 million. 
But then you look at, right, what would you have got for that? You know something that Calgary doesn't actually have mm. is a multi-sport field house. It has oh, zero really? field houses. Huh. Edmonton's got three. And, and Yellowknife has one. And Yellowknife has, has one. The cost of a multi-sport field house is about 300 million bucks. Mm. So if you now go ahead and build that field house anyway, which is a plan that Calgary is anticipated to do, now Calgary is only saving $90 million right. by not hosting the Winter Olympics. And as a result of saving $90 million, 11 legacy Olympic facilities are not going to get fixed up and $4.4 billion won't be spent in the city. Hmm. And people are going to say, well, yeah, but now they can spend the money on roads. What the hell do you think they were going to spend the $4.5 billion on? That's the whole thing you get with the Olympics is they upgrade the infrastructure to be able to hold everybody. Hmm. It gets spent on roads. It gets spent on the stuff you'll use afterwards. Vancouver spent it on stuff that got used afterwards. Right. London spent it on redeveloping the whole of East London so that the Athletes Village became cheap and affordable housing for people. Right. And now none of it. And mm. I, I, I completely, I know, I know I'm hopelessly, <laughs> awfully biased. Right. Because I would love to have a been A personal to, stake. I got a personal stake in it because I, you know, it, it, it's been part of my life. But also, I was really looking forward to being able to say, right, eight years hence, we're going to be able to take the youth of the NWT mm. to an Olympics two hours away by plane. Yeah. And park hundreds of kids in front of the Olympic Games and say, hey, look, you know, Michael Gilday went to these. Yeah. Sharon Firth went to these. Brendan Green went to these. And and basically say, look, you could too. We yeah. lost the, the Canada Games up here. Yell and I said, no, we can't do it. Mm. So we didn't get a Canada Games here. Right. Now we've lost the Olympic Games in Calgary because Calgary said, no, we can't do it. Is that it? Are we done? I mean, so I guess to put it into context, this this is a city that has had a real issue with taxpayers having to spend to pay for anything, anything city related. For uh, most obvious example being the Saddle Dome, the Saddle Dome needs to be replaced. I don't know if you've been there recently. It's not in good shape. It is in awful shape. It needs an upgrade desperately. And the city, and I, you know, I, I've read articles that say that this is not a good use of taxpayer money to spend on a, on, on a facility like this that is largely used by a private corporation. And that's fair, you know, just from, from, that, from that perspective, that's fair. But you can't, you can't tell me that that, that a new facility, you can't tell me that Rogers Arena in Edmonton isn't bringing people to Edmonton that wouldn't have previously gone there. People are actively going to Edmonton just to go to NHL games for a little vacation where they wouldn't have at NASA Coliseum. They would have been like, eh, you know, but now with a nice, bright, shiny new arena, they're like, yeah, that's a destination I want to go to. Well, guess what an Olympics does? But an Olympics would have been, an Olympics is a one-time shot. no. It isn't. It's it's it 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 kind of is. It's it's two weeks, and you gotta mop up a potential mess. Those those promises of of earnings, uh, like I well, just, I mean, two like three point five billion of that was guaranteed. But how is it guaranteed? Like the IOC just hands over three point five billion dollars. The IOC like, hands over one point two. Yeah, that is literally how that happens. Is that once you win the bid, the IOC hmm. hands over the cash. Right. Like that is absolutely. It's contingent on that. And the province said, yes, yeah, 700 million, but as, as long as you vote yes to this plebiscite. Then how do so many places continue to lose astronomical amounts of money after hosting an Olympics? The, the games that lose money, and not all of them do, mm. are the ones which have to build everything from scratch. Rio is a prime example of that. Rio right. had to build ridiculous amounts of stuff for sports that they would never, ever do again right. had to build a golf course out of nothing in a place that frankly not at all interested in golf mm. and now the golf course is just a pile of weeds right. because nobody really plays golf or is interested in golf there so it was pointless it was an exercise in futility and that is the, the olympics at its worst winter sports in calgary mm. people use that stuff yeah people still use all the stuff from the last one that's the whole point is right. that like it would have fixed all of that stuff up because people still go and still use all the things that got built for the last Winter Olympics, mm. with maybe the exception of like, well, actually, no. 
I was going to say the ski jump. The ski jump does get used. I know it gets used because I saw ads last time I was in Canmore for for ski jump training for kids in Calgary. Oh, yeah. Right? So even that has still got some legacy kicking on with people training for it. I No city would have been in better shape mm. to host the Winter Olympics in this one. And all right, fine. Calgary said no. I personally think even even looking at it from a financial point of view, the the idea that somehow putting in 390 million and getting back 4.4 billion is is financially mismanaged is insane to me but it does mean for the winter olympics if it's not going to happen in calgary i honestly don't know where it's going to go right. i don't know where it's going to fly beijing 2022 is the next one right after that will there be another one i, I don't know that we're going to see another one i will say just from a personal experience and i don't know how laterally this exactly translates but turin winter olympics uh torino 2006 um, looking at a at a at a, a chart here, it, it it costs seven hundred million. So, you know, not not nearly as much as it would cost nowadays. Um, <clears throat> and they lost three million two hundred thousand, and that I feel like that's almost I don't know, almost being modest. But we were Nicole and I when we were on our trip, we were in Torino briefly, and we were staying at a hotel that was just outside of what was the old. Uh, the athletes village from the 2006 Olympics. And it was the most depressing state. I think I have ever seen a, a, a block. It, it was like, it was honestly like you were walking through a post-apocalyptic ghost town. There was this, this long, uh, this long, like uh footbridge with, you know, like a, a huge, like a belt conveyor that you, so you didn't actually have to walk anywhere. That that conveyor belt looked like it hadn't been used since the 2006 Olympics. There were just cigarette butts in the treads the whole way down. It was just, it was depressing. And I can't imagine Torino had that bad of inf- infrastructure as far as hosting an Olympic Games. Like that, that's a that's a, a good location. You would think it's got everything. It's got mountainous regions. Um, I don't know about the about the rink there. If they had to build any new rinks or anything like that. But just the the site and the 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 most the saddest thing of all was that just outside this Olympic Village there was this uh, this big just like concrete you know kind of frame of the whole entrance area and you could see that it said it had a sign at one point that said Torino 2006 on it and had just been like peeled off and so you just saw the remnants of what used to be a sign that said Torino 2006 and it just it was so depressing and that's like that that image is just like burned in my brain as far as a, a past olympic city now again not probably not a fair you know lateral uh comparison but i can't i can't shake that sight now <laughs> my counter argument would be go and see london's olympic park and look at what it was like before look at what it was like afterwards mornings at the cabin the podcast where we cut out all the great music and you're left with the rest we're still going on the winter olympics here in studio one Basically, the entirety of the last 20 minutes has been a continuation of just uh, Lecter and I going back and forth <laughs> over <laughs> over the pros and cons of hosting a, hosting a Winter Olympics. One very informed, one marginally. Well, I was, I'm not sure I'm that informed. I was about to say, I feel like there's uh, <laughs> possibly both sides grasping <laughs> at any given straw. Um, anyway, we maybe we'll maybe bring me on Cabin Sports Radio. All right. I want to give me another half an hour of that bad boy. <laughs> Yeah. I'll put the world to rights. We All are right. good for half-hour segments on Cabin Sports Radio. We're going to park the, uh, the Winter Olympics for now. If you didn't hear, Calgary voted no to hosting the 2026 uh, Olympics yesterday. And, and Ollie is furious. Yeah, they're a bunch of morons. Anyway, <laughs> we we move on. Uh, Pikachu's getting a movie. Yeah. You see the trailer? I have not. Okay. I know you, Ryan Reynolds is in it. He, Ryan Reynolds is Pikachu. He is Pikachu. That's my understanding, yes. How? How? His voice. Ah, but uh, Pikachu has just like a squeaky no voice. No, ha ha ha! And here you stumble upon the premise of the movie. Oh, so is Pikachu grown up. The premise of the movie is that Pikachu can be understood by one human being. Well, it's that Ash kid, right? There you go. Yeah. So I say you're on board, and and that's about all I know. And about so Pokemon. basically, the kid gets the full Ryan Reynolds from Pikachu. Okay. Everybody else gets Pika Pika. Ah, I see. So I see. All, the, all these girls, for example, in the trailer are coming up and being like, oh, he's so cute. Look, Pika Pika. Mm. Whereas he's actually being kind of lecherous. If you can hear like what he's ah. saying to the kid. 
<laughs> it's like, yeah, it's... Uh, I see it now. You know what? I watched the trailer, and so help me God, I want to see the movie. Really? Yeah. Did you see the Deadpool movies? No. No? And and I realize that's a black mark that many people have just casually placed against my name. Well, I, mean, I know I should have. I, I keep meaning to. I just haven't got around to it. It's yeah. on my list. Don't, don't, don't let Wheeler listen to any of this. Because <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. I mean, he's he's disgusted enough with my lack of movie knowledge. Like, I, I think he just ignores you after that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> ever since ever since we established that I hadn't really seen Goodwill Hunting, Jaws, any you of that seen stuff, Goodwill Hunting? I have now. <laughs> I Such corrected a good movie. the error. Oh my god! You know all that sort of stuff. Fight Club, The Beach. Like, nah, uh, fight club, whatever. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> someone's gonna put a black mark by by not by my name for that one. Okay. Um, that's a, the immediate uh, the immediate the immediate thought I had when you started describing the kind of premise of Ryan Reynolds and his slots in the Pikachu movie. Definitely, yeah, reminded me a lot of Deadpool because it's it's kind of it's kind of like that. Like it's there's not the only one person can understand what he's saying, but it's very much. I, I get the impression it's gonna be the same kind of sarcastic uh like you say lecherous tone yeah. probably not quite as lecherous uh deadpool yeah was... from from what i've seen of deadpool i would say like 50 percent deadpool like yeah. on that scale yeah like when i said lecherous that was maybe like one too far down the run but clearly <laughs> right. pikachu pikachu is not saying to those women what the women think pikachu is saying right like and and so yeah i I watched that trailer and I thought, you know, I can get on board with a Inside the Mind of Pikachu after all these years movie. Mm. Yeah, and like here's There's probably a lot going on in there. I'm sure there is a lot going on in there. <laughs> like that little guy has seen some stuff. Yeah. And been some places and <laughs> many battles. And yeah, many so the, and the whole like the whole gimmick is that it's a Pokemon detective movie. Right. So throughout Pikachu is in a little Sherlock Holmes deer stalker cap. Uh-huh. Which very cute. It's, it's super cute. It's sort of like, <laughs> okay, like, so he's a detective. I see what you guys did there. Like, visual cue, right. we've made Pikachu a detective because now he's going <laughs> to wear a Sherlock Holmes cap for the whole he's movie. He's going to solve but mysteries. Like, I feel like I feel like you could have done that with words. Probably. You know, like, yeah. you could have conveyed that to the audience without just having to put a hat on the guy for the whole movie. But all right. Maybe there's a whole backstory for the hat. Maybe we, there's we a whole backstory. Exactly. Who, who am I to pretend that I have in-depth Pokemon knowledge? Did, did you, you ever play the games? Growing up, so I was about to ask you the same question. I very briefly played like the Game Boy game. Okay, dated immediately by the use of the word Game Boy. Right. Uh, game Boy Color. No, I think no. It was, I, I don't. Had it come out? For, I, 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 you know what? My memory fails. But I, I did download the augmented reality one, the Pokemon yes. Go one. Yeah. The other year, I think everyone did. And I played that for like how long? Did you play that for before life reclaimed you? Longer than I thought I would. Uh, yeah, it, it wasn't until I noticed my, my data limits uh, starting to creep up that suddenly I was like, well, you know what? Maybe this isn't the best use of my cellular plan. Um, Can I just say how depressing that is for you, adult Scott? <laughs> well, I mean, I never played. You know what? Adult Scott was the only Scott that ever got into Pokemon. So yeah, I'd say adult Scott was uh, was doing pretty good adult in the, in the was, whimsical department. No, he was doing okay, but then he shut it down because then of his cellular plan. Like, oh, <laughs> he shut it down because that's enough fun for Yellow you, <laughs> Adult Scott. Yeah, Northern Date that won't allow Adult Scott to keep on having the fun. I think I was probably the only person, or one of the only ones, who downloaded that game and just really had no idea or any concept of what they were supposed to be accomplishing. Um, I was just like, ah, oh, just it's kind of cool. I walk around, this guy walks around, and things pop up, and then I throw things at it. That's what's not to like. <laughs> it's just, just essentially a cheap. Cheap and easy means of vandalism. That you right. can't get you get, to, right. you get to throw stuff at animals. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. A reason to visit the old sportsman building there because that was a that was a pokey stop. So on my way home, always stopped at the sportsman, got some balls or whatever they're called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that went on for I think maybe like six months. Um, oh I, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, not bad. Not bad. Yeah, I, I I didn't get nearly as invested as uh, as um. Well, you know, Mike Mike and Jess. Yeah, uh, good. Mike Kevin Gibbons, Sports Radio, Mike. Kevin Sports Radio. His better half might still be hopelessly addicted to the game. I know because wow. you remember when when it first came out, and there were there were P- PSAs going out, basically saying, "Don't drive and play this game. That is dangerous and it's illegal." I think she. So she was a responsible adult and forced Mike to drive her around. <laughs> 
<laughs> to find Pokemons around Yellowknife. Oh, and I wow. think that was how they that was how they spent a good a good half year or so. I honestly thought you were about <laughs> to tell me that's how they met. The mornings at the cabin podcast, where we delete all the bad bits and make them sound at least semi coherent. A lot of snow scraping going on out there this morning. Eight o'clock already, man. A morning really flies by when you're ranting about the Olympics. For when, you're half ra- the show. when you're ranting about the Olympics <laughs> and it's pitch black outside, you'd be amazed how quickly you can get into a working day. <laughs> yeah. I, Stu's doing a great job out there, by the way, clearing the sidewalks. Yep. Uh, we, might, we might have to, uh, I don't know, get him a little Zamboni or something if he's, if he's still a little Zamboni. <laughs> I guess that's kind of what that is a little sidewalk Zamboni. But, I suppose, yeah. yeah. No, I'm enjoying that in the list of condescending Canadian Christmas gifts to get people. <laughs> oh, thanks for all your work with the uh, the snow there, but here's a here's a miniature of a Zamboni. <laughs> oh no, I made a real Zamboni. Oh, a real one. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought we were just gonna get him like a like a a sculpture of a Zamboni. No, I no, wonder. No. Hang on, I have to. I, I'm gonna look that up right now. I wonder whether that strikes me as the kind of thing only available in Canada for purchase. <laughs> miniature Zamboni. Let's see, miniature working Zamboni. No way! You can get working ones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you already knew this? I've I've seen a video of a guy who, with his backyard rink, actually, yeah, built a little a little Zamboni for it. With basically, basically just like, I don't know, I can't remember exactly how the water was running through it, but he just had like a towel out the back, and it was just, yeah, just dragging the, the water along and cleaning the ice. Like, wow, this is... This is great. This is Canada right here. <laughs> oh my god, that's absolutely um I'm 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 seeing if I can find like a toy one. Yeah, if you could get like your kid like a toy. Yeah, there's a Playmobil Zamboni. Oh, of, of course. Of course there is. Ever since that uh that Tim Hortons commercial or whatever it was when the kid was aspiring to drive be the Zamboni driver, <laughs> maybe course. it was a Canadian tire commercial. So I missed that I commercial, remember. but I feel like I could have predicted that oh, commercial's all, existence. All Canadians remember that commercial. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I'm just on Amazon's website now. So for thirty two ninety seven, I'm going to read you the the bullet points okay. on this. This is the Playmobil NHL Zamboni. Yeah. Uh, this this break brought to you by Playmobil. Worse than Lego. <laughs> uh, so so the bullet points are as follows: Smooth out the ice before and during the game with a ride on the NHL Zamboni machine, styled after the iconic ice resurfacer. <laughs> this NHL licensed set is on call to prep the rink. Wow, <laughs> a great gift for any any NHL fan. Now that is that is selling. I never thought I would hear a Zamboni described as iconic. No, right? Jeez. And it's on call to prep the <laughs> rink. <laughs> okay, okay. Whoever's, but only between periods. Let's not get carried away. Whoever's in now. marketing a Playmobil. Oh my lord! You should see the amount of action-packed fun it says with a photo of the Playmobil Zamboni. In like they've clearly taken what looks to be like a photo from a major NHL arena and then right. just popped a little like Playmobil Zamboni <laughs> in the middle of it, changed the lighting a little bit, and now it looks massive. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. The back resurfacer piece glides over the surface to smooth out the ice. It can be snapped into a lifted position when not in use. Oh, With the help of this classic machine, kids will have the ice prepped and ready to go in no time. That does sound like action-packed fun. It it It's sure. All right, it's my favorite kind of fun when it all comes down. Kids can unleash their inner athlete. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once the ice is resurfaced, then then you can. I'm unleash sorry. Your, your inner I'm athlete. sorry. It is a stretch <laughs> to buy a child to vote no to the Olympics and then buy a child a Playmobil <laughs> Zamboni and say, "Hey, kid, unleash your inner athlete." <laughs> there will be no purchases in Calgary this year. To think you dodge that bullet, you had to spend three hundred and ninety million on the Olympics. Now you just got to spend thirty two ninety seven. Now think of all the zambonis you can buy with that money that you saved. <laughs> you get a Playmobil zamboni, <laughs> and you get a Playmobil zamboni. The mornings at the cabin podcast. Hey, it was early. What do you want from us? Mornings at the cabin. Eight Let twelve. It go. No. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Calgary did. Oh, <laughs> you're just making it worse. Yeah. Ollie and Lecter with you on your Wednesday morning. Wheeler is ill. Uh, best wishes to him. We hope he gets well soon. The illest, you might say. <laughs> he is the sickest. I've, I've often said as much. <laughs> uh, however, do you think he would be a fan of eggnog? Oh, without question. Yeah. My a former radio colleague reminded me this morning via meme on my Facebook page. Mm hmm. That uh, there are two t- two types of people in this world, Ollie. 
people who love eggnog and people with no soul who refuse to let love into their lives. Huh. You either fall into one of those camps. Which one do you fall into? Uh, yes to the Olympics. Sorry, no. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, I, I have to admit, I have only the dimmest recollection of eggnog. Oh, boy. I feel like maybe seven, eight years ago, uh-huh. I might have had like a glass. Does a one have a glass? A, a mug? small smack what roll does one... of eggnog. A shot? A like... shot. <laughs> well, generally, generally you put you put rum in it. Uh, oh, you, okay. So it's an alcohol. If you this, want, you don't have to. This is this is the level of knowledge I'm operating from. I didn't realize <laughs> it went with alcohol. It does. It goes nicely with alcohol. It's not a ne- not a necessity or anything. But it, it looks like it's just custard. I mean, what what uh, is it? It's it's not it's not as thick as custard. It's kind of like in, somewhere in between milk and custard. Uh, and we're putting rum in that. And we put rum in that. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah. It's 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 what? good. I highly recommend. One it. moment. One. <laughs> Historically also known as milk punch. Milk oh. punch? Well, I've never heard that. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there is nothing appealing about that I name. I do not want any of your milk punch. Ooh. Uh, oh, well, that's that. That's going to ruin it for you. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's traditionally made with milk, cream, sugar, whipped egg whites, and egg yolks. Okay. Yeah. 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 In, some, in some contexts, says Wikipedia delicately, distilled spirits such as brandy, rum, whiskey, or bourbon are added to the drink. Yeah. Okay. Throughout Canada and the United States, traditionally consumed over Christmas season every year. Eggnog has also gained popularity in Australia. And you can only really purchase it around Christmas time here, I think. I might be wrong about that, but I feel like you don't really see it on grocery store shelves until, like, Absolutely. early November, late October, something like that. So I'm, I'm country of origin, United Kingdom, apparently. I challenge that. Really? Well, yeah, let's let's scroll down and learn about the history of eggnog. And here um, you are, Nogless. Here I am, Nogless. Right? Uh, okay. It was a, so the the origins of a, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, nog was a kind of strong beer brewed in the east of England. Ah, first use of the word in 1693, uh, and then on from there. Like apparently, eggnog is an American term introduced in 1775, uh, and so on and so on. So it sounds like the English came up with like the idea of a nog. And the Americans are like, that'd be great with eggs. <laughs> Americans found a way to make it less healthy. <laughs> yeah, turned it into milk punch. <laughs> but more delicious, I would have to say. I don't know what original nog tasted like. <laughs> Eggless nog. I don't care to try that, quite <laughs> frankly. I'll just take my nog plain, thanks. Do you have do you have original nog? Nog on the rocks, perhaps. <laughs> oh, dear. No, you got to try some eggnog. Okay. You know what? We, we have a fridge in here. I'm going to buy some eggnog, Okay. and we'll have some cabin eggnog. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Share a glass. Morning's at a cabin on Thursday, everybody. Tune in for this radio moment. <laughs> Appointment to listen. Uh, we, we're going to sample some eggnog on the air. Yeah. Um, you'll, you'll be able to tell from the lip smacking. <laughs> Whether my milk punch is going down well or not. I've, I've just got to refer to Stop, it. Stop, no. No, I've got to refer to it throughout the rest of my life now as milk punch. Don't ruin the joy of eggnog for everybody with that awful term. <laughs> Merry oh. Punchmas, everybody. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast was recorded before a sort of live, thankfully not in the studio, audience. Christmas is coming up. And, you know, uh, while you settle down and wait to help yourself to a milk punch, Stop. I also, I also want you to know that we've got an open house coming up yeah. on Saturday. Mm. Uh, come on down to Cabin Radio in downtown Yellowknife from ten till five on Saturday, and take a look at all of our fancy wares. Uh, we got hoodies, tees. The hoodies are really nice as mm-hmm. well. This 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 Christmas, we've got a a variety of hoodies, and they are blooming lovely. Yeah. The the latest hoodie that I bought from my own radio station. Is incredibly comfy. It's, it's like so now my nice, favorite too. thing to wear, yeah. which I was already like a walking billboard for cabin radio at <laughs> wow. the best of times. But now I just refuse to take that thing off. And like, you can be too. Really, no kidding. You come down to cabin radio, ten to five on Saturday, and come take a look at you know, the caps, the, ho- the hoodies, the tees, uh, the beach towels, the fanny packs. Speaking of the the hoodies, I I enjoy that we don't necessarily have. We don't necessarily have new styles. We got a few different, uh, a few different kinds of, but they're kind of just like inverted styles. We've got interpretations, yes, 
I would say. <laughs> yeah. We have they do look sharp, though. We have a, a classic cabin radio style, and these are a few new little, like, similar but slightly different takes on that, and different varieties, different formats, I guess you'd say. We were really looking forward to the zip-up green hoodies coming in, and they finally did, and they were... Everything we hope they would be. They delivered. More. They're so beautiful. They absolutely delivered. Yep. You want to come check those out. We've got t-shirts as well. Like I say, we've got a whole bunch of other stuff. We've even got shades. We've got those little beer cozy things. Uh, everything you could everything you could need for Christmas. Towels. Beach towels. I don't know if you mentioned those towels. Those Kevin Radio beach towels. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, green and orange. I, I never knew that a beach towel that was green and orange could work. <laughs> oh, it works. I'm not even, I'm not even saying that just because I want you to buy them, which obviously I do. But uh, those beach towels are quite something. As we discovered, there's kind of a Where's Waldo element to those towels, too. Oh, did you? Were you not there for that? Where's Waldo element? Yeah. The towels? What? The, the muskox is hiding in the towel design somewhere. Seriously? Have you seen the muskox? So I'm going to go and stare at a beach towel for the next <laughs> five minutes. This better not be some kind of magic eye muskox in a beach towel. Well, it could be. You'll just have to come You're down You're just trying and to get me to out. look at a beach towel for five minutes. Ah, there's worse uses of your time. All right, come down from 10 till 5. We've got to pin up a beach towel. <laughs> Everyone can stare at it and try and find Scott's hidden muskox. You don't win anything, just your own sense of self-satisfaction. Although, speaking of winning stuff, we are going to come up with a little promotion. So we're not sure what shape or form that's going to take just yet. But uh, if you come down and you buy some merch from us on Saturday during the open house, we will make sure everybody gets entered into a little draw yeah. to, to win some cool stuff. Now. Details of cool stuff to be confirmed, but everybody who comes down will uh, we'll have you in a little drawer as well, and we'll give you a little something extra if you win as a result of that. So yeah, 10 to 5, come down, say hello. If you don't live uh, anywhere near Yellow Life, you can't get to it, uh, you can always just uh, get us by email if you want to find out what we've got and you're looking to pick up some Christmas gifts for people. You can email mailbox at cabinradio.ca and one of us will help you out. Thanks for listening. Check out more from the show at cabinradio.ca.